Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and sometimes you need to give yourself 24 hours just to calm down because that initial reaction would have been way too salty. Before I start, Jawbreakers Forever, Graphic Novel, Ironsides 3, Impossible Stars 2. I know I said I was going to take them down a few days ago, but Indiegogo has changed the procedure for closing a campaign and it's not as quick as it used to be. And thank you to everyone who told me what issue to jump on with this uh, run with Morlin. Man, this is good. But I did not realize how old it was. It was more than 20 years ago. So anyway, a few days ago, Colleen Duran, who has been in the industry for decades, yes, there were women in the industry before 2015. She's uh, had a lot of ups and downs. She has OCD, so she talked about this app called Freedom, where you can lock yourself out of your own phone. And man, ever since I started using that, holy shit, have I gotten more productive. So she says, I just saw someone complaining that some creators in comics get hired with no previous experience. Uh, so? Kubert, Shooter, Levitz, Von Eaton, Jusko, me, and many more all got hired as teens. Kubert was 12 years old, as I recall. I think she's talking about the sons were doing lettering work. I heard uh, Ed Piscor mentioning that in Cartoonist Kayfabe. So then Heather responds early in the day. Didn't Jim Shooter famously get hired as a 13-year-old to write Superman? Somebody mansplains to her that it was actually Legion of Superheroes that had Superboy in it. And she says, ah yes, I knew it was something in the DC corner. This stewed in her mind apparently the entire day. So she went back for another response. And she said, the more I go back and read this, the more furious I get at all the memories of myself and other women breaking in and then continuously getting told we haven't, quote, paid our dues, unquote, by the same folks who worship these literal teenage heroes of theirs. Jim Shooter was literally the son of a steel worker growing up in abject poverty in Pennsylvania. He started working as a teenager to literally help support the house. He didn't get a job because Jordan White wanted a work girlfriend. For people who don't know that phrase or are pretending to not know what it means, here's Urban Dictionary defining work girlfriend. Favorite female coworker who you get along with really well and enjoy spending time with, but in a platonic way. So let's go through Jim Shooter's life of privilege. He's 71 years old. He is most notable for his successful and controversial run as Marvel Comics' ninth editor-in-chief and his work as editor-in-chief of Valiant Comics. At one point he was sick and he was reading DC Comics and he noticed they hadn't changed in the few years since he quit reading, but Marvel Comics were very impressive. So he basically wrote to DC saying, hey, I think I can write Marvel style at the age of 13. At age 13, in mid-1965, Shooter wrote and drew stories featuring the Legion of Superheroes and sent them into DC Comics. On February 10th, 1966, that's a very exact date, he received a phone call from Mort Weisinger, who wanted to purchase the stories that Shooter had sent, and commissioned Shooter to write Supergirl and Superman stories. Weisinger eventually offered Shooter a regular position on Legion, and wanted Shooter to come to New York to spend a couple of days in his office. Shooter, who was 14 and lived in Pittsburgh, had to wait until school was in recess, after which he went to New York with his mother, spurred in part by the need to support his financially struggling parents. According to Shooter, his father earned very little as a steel worker, and Shooter saw comic book writing as a means of helping economically. Shooter reflected in a 2010 interview, My family needed the money. I was doing this to save the house. My father had a beat up old car and the engine died. This is before I started working for DC. And that first check bought a rebuilt engine for his car, so he didn't have to walk to work anymore. I was doing this because I had to, working my way through high school to help keep my family alive. But for several years he was going in and out of comics specifically because he was in a very toxic work environment. Specifically with Julius Schwartz, who he had a very complicated history with throughout his life. If you've ever seen the movie Whiplash with uh, Goose's son from Top Gun Maverick and J.K. Simmons, that's essentially how his early days in comics were. And what he used to do when he was first pitching stories is he would not only write them, but he would draw them. 
I remember he did some fill-in issue of Spider-Man. It was not that great, but it was it was passable. Jim Shooter came into a Marvel that was essentially a hippie commune. While Stan Lee had been editor-in-chief from 1961 to 1972, the 70s were insane. Roy Thomas, 1972 to 1974. Len Wein, 1974 to 1975. Marv Wolfman, again, just a year. Jerry Conway, not even a year. Archie Goodwin, 76 to 78. And then here's Jim Shooter, almost a decade. And he did a whole bunch of things. First of all, he just got, you know, regularity. He had a bunch of disorganized hippies taking turns being editor-in-chief every other year. So he got the books on a schedule. He got a baseline of quality. And then he started expanding. Things like Secret Wars. This was a massive event, and they didn't used to have stuff like this. He hires Anna Senti as a secretary. She's not that crazy about being a secretary, but she's got some talent. So they make her an editor and later a writer. Anna Senti, along with Louise Simonson, turned X-Men from a single book into a franchise. Okay, technically, everyone has no experience before their first job, except for when they do. Except for when they're Chuck Dixon and they've spent years doing independent comics. Except for when they're Louise Simonson and she's worked at multiple indies before Marvel. Except for Jim Shooter, who took time after school to write and draw sample stories, not sample pages, entire stories, while he was still in high school. So anyway, before I go, Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel, Ironsides 3 and Impossible Stars 2 combo campaign. Thanks for watching.